All right, KMR, welcome back to the channel, The Braps. So you guys asked for it, specific request. Everybody wanted to see a little bit of a breakdown of my Formula Drift three rotor. This is the three rotor that we ran this season in the Formula Drift Mazda RX-8. Renewable lubricants, E-Flex, Exidy Clutch, Mazda Tricks. Um, just thank you guys so much. And everybody, Precision Turbo, Haltech, who made it happen. Because I can't uh, test 1,000 horsepower rotaries without some substantial help. It's what gives me the possibility. So everybody wanted to see what it looks like. And uh, here we have the majority of it laid out. Um, I always strive for reliability and proper performance goals in my builds. If you'll notice, this is a street port. I think a uh, majority of drift car, three rotor, high horsepower builds these days go into the bridge port or semi-peripheral port setup. I liked going with the street port um, keeping the port size fairly reasonable, turbo size fairly small. We didn't run a lot of overlap. That allowed us to keep that small turbo. Um, it put a lot of stress into the block in regards of total boost pressure. We had to run over 30 PSI a boost, so the whole block had to be studded. You can see we're studded throughout. Um, and, and that extra stress, that extra boost, allowed us to give the horsepower we wanted, um, but it really did test components. I think we could have made more horsepower um, with more aggressive porting, but we wanted a power band that was very usable in competition against V8s and 2JZs. So we stuck with street porting and developed this package. And we were able to achieve, no problem, 900 horsepower on boost, and then with our two-stage nitrous system, over 1,000 horsepower at the wheels. Everything was very reliable. It was a fun to drive setup and it had a great power band. If you follow the channel, I'm now gonna build a peripheral port turbo. Um, and I'd like to do one of these three rotors as a bridge port. Um, I've got some, some new ideas to play with, but I'll always say that build with the intent. I knew I wanted a thousand horsepower. I knew I wanted reliability. That meant I had to have good oil system. I had to have a strong block. Everything had to be set up. We ran a dry sump. We always maintained minimum 80 PSI oil pressure under load with usually ranging about 100. This particular motor's always ran renewable lubricants. You can see the shaft is absolutely gorgeous. This was a WPC, to WPC treated shaft about four years ago. And I think that's another interesting thing is this block right here. This is not one year on this block. The majority of these components are on their third or fourth year. It was green, it was black, it was blue, and I think at one point it was silver. And so you can see that this motor's been around for a while and it was not even one of the large casting blocks. It's all a matter of keeping components cool, properly oiled, um, and EGTs and boost pressures within the block's ability to handle them. We did get into the 1800 Fahrenheit EGT range, running over 30 PSI a boost. Um, it was definitely stressing this motor, but we were able to achieve our goals and we're very happy with the results. Now moving into a new direction. But as you can see, um, another thing, this, this was all a lapped block. Every one of these has been lapped a few times and uh, they, they look pretty good. You know, we've got a little bit of wear um, I don't think I lapped all of these last year. I think maybe I touched one or two up, but uh, again, advocation for resurfacing in the rotary world, because if you didn't resurface these components, you'd be getting more and more wear that can cause compression loss, oil leak down, um, and a chance of not sealing in your water seal area, similar to head gasket seal on piston motors. So once a year, whether it be once every two years, whatever your maintenance regimen can be on your race engine, I highly recommend not just racing them until they have a failure, but figure out a good point at which you can service them, especially if you've got a high dollar build with uh, you know, custom machine components, check them once a year, check them once every two years, and you're likely to get years of enjoyable use 
out of even excessively high horsepower built race engines. Um, Apex seals survive fine. We're running two piece. You can see our side seals, our bearings, I'm running race bearings, factory stationary gear, all that stuff. We just mill down the rotors, a little bit of lightning, side clearancing. Um, and we did play within this motor, um, some aftermarket corner seals. Um, and we did occasionally run some OEM ones. So I've got a mixture in here because we were doing a little testing. Um, both survived fine. So no issues either way there. But always looking for new components that we can uh, recommend. Kind of checking the wear quality on and wear, uh, wearability on those components. All right, so I think that's a, a wrap. Feel free to ask questions. Running a traditional multi-window main bearings. Uh, the center bearing, which is very hard to get now, is a three-window design. Everything looks gorgeous. Shaft looks gorgeous. This motor will go back together. Probably a new color and a bunch of fresh seals to make it all happy and essentially a complete rebuild. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following the channel. Hit that like button. Like it, please. It really helps out. Um, the channel's growing and we're trying to bring more content. I hope everybody enjoys seeing what a year of Formula Drift 1000 horsepower rotary wear looks like. It's not too bad. This motor will brap again. And that's a brap. I gotta go get to work. Thanks for watching. KMR.